2016 has been an interesting year for Kendall Grayman. At times he has shown he has top-notch Major League stuff. The ground ball pitcher has had some moments where he has dominated on the diamond. But then there's been other starts where he has looked frustrated and lost on the hill. The right-hander needs more consistency to show he belongs in the A's starting rotation. Tonight, Grayman and the A's take on Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, and the Angels of Anaheim. It's game one of a three-game weekend set versus the Halos, and it starts right now. It's the second series of the year between the A's and the Angels. Angels will go with the right-hander Matt Shoemaker, and the Athletics will go with the right-hander Kendall Grayman. Fireworks after the game, and it's a big weekend of baseball here in Oakland. It's the Angels and the Athletics coming up on CSN California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Kendall Graveman making his 13th start of the year. Ray just one win in his last nine starts, and he continues to search for some consistency, almost consistency from inning to inning when he starts. Well, let's hope it happens here at the Coliseum last Sunday in Cincinnati. Did not work so well for him. He had a chance to get a win, but you look at his numbers compared to last season. He's a sinker ball pitcher. Of course, pitchers like to pitch at the Coliseum because it's a big part. Kobe Lewis proved that yesterday, but for Kendall Graveman, he wants to be a ground ball pitcher. He has been that throughout his career, especially with the athletics. And if he's a ground ball pitcher, regardless where he pitches, he's going to put up some good numbers. He just needs the, the consistency, like you said. All right, after five starts, Matt Shoemaker was actually sent to the minor leagues. He was struggling, but since coming back, he's pitched much better. He's coming off his best start of the year against the Indians. Well, the one thing he came back with was an outstanding split finger fastball. He will not wait to get to two strikes. He'll throw it early to the count. He will not necessarily give a fastball to the hitter on the first pitch to and try to swing and make contact. Contact, but he has a great split finger fastball put away pitch and really for him he is trying to prove that he belongs in this rotation on a consistent basis just like uh, Kendall Graveman so should be a good matchup tonight but this young man has pitched extremely well he's not going to walk many batters as he has proven the last five starts right, so Shoemaker and Graveman is your pitching matchup tonight a couple of right handers in game one of this three game series here at the Coliseum stick around we'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back A's and Angels coming up on CSN California.
on CSN California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. It's back, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Nice night for baseball here at the Coliseum as we get set for a weekend against the Angels. A's and Angels. He's sporting the gold tops tonight. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 64 degrees with a breeze of 12 miles per hour. So as the game goes on, you may see the jackets come out, sweatshirts, which is pretty common here at the Coliseum. Lineup tonight for the visiting Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. You know Escobar is the third baseman. Cole Calhoun in right, Mike Trout in center, Albert Pujols at first. Pujols with 572 career home runs. Jeffrey Marte is the DH. Daniel Nava just off the disabled list. Johnny Giovatel on second. Jet Bandy is the catcher, and Andrewton is simply the shortstop. And Kendall Graveman can look back to the start he had against the Angels in the early part of the season. He pitched well, six innings of one run baseball, but a no decision when the Angels came from behind. But Kendall Graveman coming off a start in Cincinnati. And it's a little bit different tonight for him here in Oakland, and he hopes to get it on track against the Angels, two teams that really are not exactly where they'd like to be record wise, especially looking back at the beginning of the season when the Angels swept the Athletics in the three game series. So Yunel Escobar steps in. Angels third baseman first pitch of the game is on the outside corner for a strike Escobar Calhoun and Trout the first three hitters first for the pitch, Angels Escobar at 310 he's got three home runs and 18 RBIs 16 doubles pretty good on base percentage of 362 taps this one toward the left side Valencia has it and Valencia throws out Escobar, and that's the first out of the game. So the defense for the A's, Crisp, Burns, and Muncy in the outfield. Valencia, Simeon, Lowry, Alonzo on the infield. And Steven Vogt is the catcher. So a little time off this week for Steven Vogt. Not that he wanted it or asked for it, but lefties on the mound yeah. against the A's. So Fegley got a few more starts. Yeah, it's unusual. Of course, the A's saw the White Sox begin of the season with three of the four starters were lefties, and same with the Rangers just in town. Good start, though, for Kendall Graveman. The ground ball out with Escobar. He had good sink on the fastball. Calhoun at 293, eight home runs, 37 RBIs. Hitting in the two spot. Angels come in with a 29 and 37 record. They're in fourth place. They are 14 and 17 on the road this year. Valencia backs up. A couple steps onto the outfield grass. He's got it. 2 0. The umpires for tonight's game. That is Doug Eddings. He'll call balls and strikes. Jeff Nelson is the crew chief at first. Nick Lentz is at second. Corey Blazer is at third. Do you know Nick? No. Let's check out the binoculars. <laughs> see if we recognize him. We. I don't think we've seen Nick Lentz oh. before. Look with umpires, you sort of put names and faces <laughs> yeah, together, yeah. and you see him quite a bit, so you know. But that is a name we have not seen before. <laughs> Somebody's on vacation. <laughs> Who's on vacation? I don't know. <laughs> well, we, we wish him well. He'll get the Sunday series finale. Umpire at second as they rotate. We'll be behind the plate on Sunday. Jeff Nelson is at first, so he'll be behind the plate tomorrow for the second game of the series. Mike Trout, another good season. 305, 13 home runs and 44 runs batted in. The face of baseball, Mike Trout. And I think so. Oh, what a career he has already had, and still a very young man, and getting some players hot. Of course, as you approach the All Star game, he will be in San Diego. You get a name like that, you're going to have a lot of votes from America. Well, he's an opponent that we see a lot. 
and he has hurt the A's over the years but we like watching him play I think he plays the game the right way plays hard and look at the defense that's how much you appreciate Mike Trout because they're playing him straight up all the way around because he does use the whole field tremendous power and that's why what Kendall Graven has done already tonight getting the first two batters Escobar and Calhoun and now facing Trout with nobody on base Pujols in the on deck circle I'd like to see him starting off the second inning. To pitch hit in the hole backhanded by Simeon throws across wide and Trout beats it. Cannot take any time with Mike Trout. So it's an E6. Just to his right and Trout tremendous speed and Simeon got as much as he could on the throw but with the strong throw pulled Alonzo off the back try to reach back and tag Trout on the way past him but he missed him. And no reaction from Alonzo, which would indicate that he did not get him. And you know, there are certain times that you really can't be concerned about a grip on a baseball. And you pick it up and you throw it. And you know, you try to spin it in the glove if you have a little extra time, but sometimes you just get it and throw it and hope it's as straight as you can. Yeah, and, and you could see Simeon after he fielded the ball, there was a little crow hop. Right. And a lot of shortstops won't even take that crow right. hop. They'll just throw right. it right with their leg planted after they field it exactly and, well, and with the speed. a little step yeah. right yeah here right there's a crow hop he's trying to get the good grip and then has to say oh, oh I got to hurry and when you hurry and throw it's usually offline which that one was if it's on the bag he's out and that's why Marcus was given an error on the play so it's the sixth there of the year and this is part of the five tool Trade of Mike Trout where he can get down the line quickly, just duck down to avoid the tag by Alonzo. Threat to steal, which he's capable. Good pitch oh. there, two and one. But as they have done in the past, the, the shift, although with Jed Lowry, not so much to the third base side of second, but a huge hole on the right side, and Albert Pujols will go that direction. And you can see there, and especially with runners in scoring position, he will definitely shoot the ball to right field and try to drive in a run. But as the A's are hopeful that he would take the single and not hit a ball in the seats. So as a result, they're planning to pull and actually pitching him a little bit away. 3 1 pitch. And that one's going to bounce off the glove of Simeon. He dove for it. So it'll be a hit for Pujols. And right there is the reason that you try to get the hitters out in front of the two big guys. And Marte well, swinging the bat well comes up next. That ball elevated. Did get a ground ball and pull his hit on top of it, but kind of in, in between third and short to the point that Simeon, while diving for the ball, didn't really have a play for anybody. Expo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So here's Jeffrey Marte. So our first look at Marte. He was not with the team earlier this year when the Angels came here. Well, if he's as good as the other Marte with the Mariners who play so well against the A's named Cattell, a few Martes in baseball. Starling Marte with mm -hmm. the Pirates is very good. Six pitches to Escobar and Calhoun, two quick outs. And then working hard to try to get out of the inning with the two big boys on base. Outside now, two and oh, Marte is 24 years old. He'll be 25 next week from the Dominican Republic. 6 1, 220 pounds. Mike Sosha, 17 years as the manager of the Angels. Longest tenured manager in baseball, same team all those years. Time now for the Nissan Keys of the game. How about for Kendall Graveman? I think this is true. Better weather, better results. Last Sunday in Cincinnati, really, really hot and humid. 
And for the A's who lost three straight to the Angels back in the early part of April, three straight as a matter of fact, the Angels came in two and four, left five and four. So the A's trying to pay back a little bit in this three game series. Driven to center. Burns has to hustle back. Still going back, and Burns makes the catch. So well struck ball, but Billy Burns tracks it down, and the Angels strand a pair in the top of the first. Starting lineup. Speed at the top. And it'll be Burns, Chris, and then vote Valencia Davis in the middle. Lowry, Alonzo, Simeon, and Muncie. That's your Oakland A starting lineup. And it is Matt Shoemaker on the mound for the Angels. As kind of said earlier, sent to the minor leagues, but back and he is pitching extremely well. Three and seven record, but an inflated ERA. A lot of that is a result in the early part of the season, but he has come back. You look at his last five starts, only one walk. But 49 strikeouts before he walked a batter, put himself in the record books along with some pretty impressive pitchers. But a good split finger fastball in the game he pitched against the A's back on the 13th of April. Ten fly ball outs, so too many fly ball outs to be exact on a Wednesday afternoon here at the Coliseum in the series finale. The A's lost all three to the Angels. First pitch is outside. Burns hitting 249 with seven RBIs. Chris to follow and then vote against Matt Shoemaker. Fast, excuse me. I'm right. sorry. Fastball low 90s cap with a good sinking fastball, but the splitter is the big pitch for him. And I think we're probably going to see a lot of them tonight, not necessarily in a strikeout situation. Well, Shoemaker, after five starts, was one in four with a 9.15 ERA, and that's why he had a trip to the minor leagues. It was not a long trip. Everybody's okay in the A's dugout, but in fact, he only made one start in the minors. But then when he came back, he started to get a little bit better. In fact, with all the injuries that the Angels starting rotation has gone through. They needed Shoemaker to straighten it out and get back to pitching well, and he has done that. 29 year old right hander. Tap slowly. Simmons, the shortstop. He's good. And he throws out Burns on a close play. So. Angels pitchers to strike out 11 and allow zero runs, which Shoemaker did and get a no decision, unfortunately. Happened twice to Shoemaker. And then there's Nolan Ryan and Frank Tanana on the list. Happened to them twice. Hey, guy on the left, Frank Tanana. I know your brother owned him, but. Uh, <laughs> a few flares to left. <laughs> but that's when he's with the Angels. He threw hard. Show him with the Tigers. He was a completely different pitcher, but Frank Tanana, along with Nolan Ryan, two very hard throwing pitchers, one from the left, one from the right. 
<laughs> oh, they were, Ryan and Tanana were together for, what, three, four years maybe? Yeah. Maybe a little bit longer. And I'm sure the Angels pitched them back to back. Well, hard throwing, and you didn't have to worry about a bullpen with those guys whenever they were hard throwers. But it was uh, Ryan Express and the hard throwing left hander Frank Tanana. You know, it would be a, a great side by side video. Is Tanana throwing when he was like a rookie with the Angels, and then Tanana throwing at the end yeah, of his career when he was right. with the Tigers? It was about 15 miles per hour. Different. Yeah, like a slow pitch softball pitcher. <laughs> But he was as effective then yeah. as the Tigers. But he completely transformed himself into a different type of pitcher and it worked well. And there's your splitter right there. So that's the splitter that Ray's been talking about. And it is a very good pitch for Shoemaker. Two outs. Defensively for the Angels, Nava, Trout, and Calhoun in the outfield. Escobar, Simmons, Giovatella, and Pujols on the infield. Jet Bandy is your catcher. I just like saying that name, Jet Bandy. <laughs> That's a good name. So two away, here's Steven Vogt. First pitch to Vogt is a sinker for a strike from Shoemaker. Vogt at 269, five home runs, 16 RBIs. He has Three hits in his career against Shoemaker, just three for 18, but two of them are home runs. And he had a good rip there. They're getting ready. They all believe in Steven Vogt. So a cow sign, a bunch of A sign. You can see a warrior sign out there. They got every other thing, every sport covered. A two pitch. Loop down the left field line. Nava on the move. He's not going to get it, and it's just foul. Well, Stephen Vogt, he got uh, Matt Shoemaker this one in Anaheim. That pitch up, and that's probably why he went back to Mount Leagues. That pitch right there. And here at the Coliseum, a hanging breaking ball. He knew it was gone. You could see him drop his head. So as a result, throwing a lot of splitters. Oh, Brett Laurie. <laughs> He's trade Brett Laurie and trade for Jed Lowry. Yeah, I would not have lasted <laughs> if they were on the team together last year. I, it, I, I spent three months <laughs> writing down Lori to make sure I said it That's right. Lori, L O R. But it wasn't spelled that way. Nope. It is the splitter and a couple of strikeouts for Shoemaker in the first inning. No score after one, the A's and the Angels.
ballpark. Log on to athletics.com slash tickets. Use coupon code DAD to receive $10 off field level tickets to see the A's take on these angels right here at the Coliseum. Discounted Father's Day tickets are subject to availability. So make plans now to treat Dad to an afternoon baseball game this Sunday, June the 19th, right here at the Coliseum against the Angels. Should be a fun day at the Coliseum. This is Daniel Nava, who skies one into foul territory near the A's bullpen and into the seats. So one and one the count to Nava followed by Giovatella and Bandy here in the top of the second inning. Okay, it was that uh, series back in April when Daniel Nava hit a base hit. Actually it was a game that Kendall Graven was pitching not against him. He had a ground ball to shortstop went in left field that brought up Albert Pujols who drove in two runs they're playing him to pull again. And he does to the right fielder. Second baseman playing in the right field. Oh, that's a nice play. Yeah. And that's the reason if you get him to pull the ball and get a ground ball, that's what you want instead of him staying inside the ball and going to left field, which fortunately he did back in April. But this is exactly well, the reason they there. shift him. Good play by Jed to make the three six. A nice cover by the pitcher. Kendall Graveman is diving for it was Alonzo. Kendall said, I'm here, I'm gonna get here, get it to me, and he did. Nice play by both players. So one out here is Giovatella. Johnny Giovatella. Okay, last Sunday when Kendall Graveman covered first, he did not get back the mound as quickly as no, he did was, this time. Well, different weather, yeah. but it was hot in Cincinnati on Sunday. And Kendall Graven, he he just did not look good. Yeah. It looked like he was sick. He had to bunt and run hard to first when Vado actually is going to go to second base. And then the bottom of the inning, he had to cover first, and at that point, he just uh, it just didn't really have much left. He, as a matter of fact, faced one batter in the fifth and had to come out in a game in which the A's had the lead and cost him a game as far as a win total. There's a line drive toward Coco. Coco dives and he had it and he dropped it. Giovatelli hustling for second and he'll make it with a double. Well, Coco had it just for a second. But a heck of an effort. It almost a terrific play. Well, it's going to be a double, probably a triple if he had not corralled it, but got it in his glove, hit the ground, came up, but had to throw from his knees. That time, Giovatella was able to get the second base. But, you know, you're, you're looking at a long glove, and you see the length of the glove? It got it in the webbing. Look where they caught it. And as a result, when he hit the ground, he couldn't position. squeeze it yeah. to hang on to it. Number 47. He's talking Jeff to Max Muncy Bandy. about playing the infield and outfield. He talked about the glove being about 12 inches long. And you, you can have a, a bigger glove in the outfield because you want to be able to jump up and maybe rob somebody of a home run. But in that case, he was not able to squeeze it tightly enough. So sometimes when that ball is in the webbing, it just it rattles around a yep. little bit. And when you hit the ground, it's definitely going to fall out because it's just you can squeeze it. The glove with your hand, but it's in the palm, mm -hmm. not in the extension in the webbing. So, runner in scoring position for Jet Bandy. Down and in, and the count is. One and one. But this was Graven on Sunday. And it was, you know, in the mid 90s and very humid in Cincinnati. So it's okay to bottle, bottle the ball there. And then he had to really sprint to first base. And then covering first base on the bottom of the inning. And at that point, oh, somebody please help me. Billy Butler walked him back to the mound to let him catch his breath. A tough to. Pitch in better weather than no. here at the Coliseum. Right. It's usually cool, comfortable. Bandy swings and misses. One of the other guy I saw was Rich Harden when he sprinted on a routine ground ball to short in St. Louis in the middle of the summer. He never <laughs> caught his breath after that. Swing and a miss on a good breaking ball. It was elevated and big uppercut swing. 
by Bandy. Swing and a miss. Ran it right in on the hands, and that's the first strikeout for Kendall Graveman. Good sinker down and in, and with big swing uppercut, it's tough for a hitter to make contact with the ball. The sinker position. down, almost hit him in the right thigh as he swung close to the plate. The pitch really breaking down and in. And a good sinker, although not a ground ball, but even better, a strikeout with a runner at second. So here's Andrelton Simmons. Just back from the disabled list. He was activated on Wednesday. And the Angels have to be thrilled to have him back. On the ground, nice big hop for Simeon. And that will do it. So Giovatelli is stranded at second. Bottom of the second coming up. It'll be Valencia, Davis, and Lowry. No score. is brought to you by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Go to AAA.com for more details. No score, bottom of the second inning. Eye black on. <laughs> She's ready. Valencia Davis and Lowry against Shoemaker. Had a good first inning, couple of strikeouts. Hayes are struggling. They're 27 and 39 lost three in a row and they've lost 10 out of 12 and yesterday almost yeah almost I mean no hitter broken up in the ninth inning by Max Muncie but the perfect game on the line for Kobe Lewis going with seven and two thirds in the eighth Max Muncie got the first hit in the ninth leading off a ball off the right field wall Coco would get a bloop hit to, to left field to drive him in but Kobe Lewis was dominating all day We've seen it before, but oh, never yeah. to that extent. But we're yeah. guys going back to the dugout, shaking their head. Exactly. One and two to Valencia. Tapped foul. Well, Max Muncy in the ninth inning, he had just missed one earlier ball on the handle. This ball, he said, was off the end of the bat. To be honest, I thought it was gone. Mazzara had it. Lost it. He had a long way to run and just could not hang on as he banged into the wall. Thought it might have stayed in his glove, but David Feldman, the official score, immediately called it a double, which it was. And then Coco Chris with the bloop base hit to left field. But it was a dominating effort all day. That one's driven to right, hit well. Calhoun going back, turns around, and it is off the top of the wall. Valencia's singling home run. There's a about a three four foot ledge above that out of town scoreboard and once it bounces up there it's over the yellow line it's a home run and 
And they're shaking their head no. So it must have just hit right near that yellow line, but not on the top of that ledge. Well, Adam Roden would be down in the, the video room right there, front between the four and the seven. If it got above the yellow line, it would have got above off the back wall and back onto the field. But Valencia thought he had it. And that's what he's indicating. Thought he hit it on top and bounced back, but great slow mo, X mo to bring it back in between the four and the seven. And at least a two strike opposite field double. CA started the leading off this inning. And here's Chris Davis. And it's the seventh double of the year for Danny Valencia. In the hole, Simmons won a play. He throws to first, and it trickles past Pools, and that's going to allow Valencia to go to third. Well, Sim Simmons, I mean, he's so good at short. I, I think he feels like yeah. he can get every every ball and every throw. That's one he probably should have held on. Yeah, because Chris Davis gets down the line quite well. You go to the ground. And then he threw it in the ground trying to get the short hop, position. but it was a, a ball. Did it go off Mike Aldretti? Yeah. It may have. See if we could see the after it gets past pools. Does Mike Aldretti get hit because it scooted through? No, went off the glove. Yeah, and then hit Aldretti and stopped. But Danny Valencia was not going. The ball was in front of him, but once the ball got past Pujols, he was able to go to third. And Shoemaker saying, please don't throw, don't throw, and just wonder how far it would have gone had it not hit off of Aldretti. So it's a single and an E6. First and third, nobody out for Lowry. A good opportunity here for the A's to cash in. Now, Kipe, I know you've heard me say it many times. This is a gift run. Yep. Infield's Crunch. back. And really, contact will get you a run, ideally. More than a double play ground ball, but at worst, you make contact for Shoemaker. He's hoping for a strikeout and then a double play, but right now it's up to Jet Lowry to try to do something with the first and third. And Valencia can get halfway to third. Escobar over towards the shortstop position with Jet Lowry at the plate. And he just keeps moving back farther and farther. Allows Valencia to get off farther and farther. That's where you want to get a big lead in the event there is a ball that gets away from a catcher, but yep. not as far that you have to be concerned, doesn't have to go to the backstop. Outside. Lowry, a 389 hitter with runners in scoring position. So the A's have a good man up there. The thing about Jed Lowry, he uses the whole field, and they're shifting him a little bit over shifting to the right side. But they pitch him away, he will shoot it to left field. And the numbers, the last two for Shoemaker, 13th, of course, against the A's, just one hit. Runner goes, fouled straight back. So Chris Davis on the move. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Then he split finger fastballs. He throw first of all, it's hard for a catcher to, to catch the ball because it is a good one. There's the all-time stolen base leader, Ricky Henderson, in town. It was like Velcro. Billy Burns went right to him. <laughs> As it should. Absolutely. If I were Billy, I would go right to the best. And he did exactly that during BP. So two and one the count. Whoa. That one is driven down the right field line. Foul. Hmm. So Lowry just out in front hooked it a little bit. Like the splitter just came inside a little bit too much from his standpoint and had a great swing. Two seam fastball that didn't really come back. It stayed, and Jed knew he got enough. Just a matter of it stayed fair and trying to help it. But all it did was come close to a lady and a child.
And the inning started with the double by Valencia. In the dirt, blocked nicely by Bandy. So full count. See if Davis takes off. Uh, sweater, you know it's going to be down. You want it to be down, which means you smother it, get down in front, and block the ball. Move nice laterally. Kept his glove down. What was the speedster named Jet in uh, San Juan? Benny the Jet. Benny the Jet. Yeah. 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 Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Yeah, maybe they'll play that tonight in the uh, baseball movie That's theme something. tonight. <laughs> Three two pitch Davis not running and Lowry. Right back to the screen the fireworks coming up after the game. With the baseball movies theme so that'll be fun. Yeah. These fans would love to see some fireworks. Bob Melvin would love to see the fireworks during the game. And as the skipper always says, get a good crowd, play well in front of them. Another 3 2 coming up to Lowry. Davis not running, and the ball's bounced foul. Well, I know you're a, you're, I think you're a Field of Dreams guy. Yeah, I like them all, though. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's, that's a good. Natural's good. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm not baseball man. Bull Durham. A little more adult theme. Bull Durham. You know, I've never seen that. Pretty good. Bad News Bears, very strong. Chris Davis has not run, and the thinking here perhaps is that if there's a strikeout and a throw out, you don't want to get two outs with the runner at third base. And I think uh, at this point, just trying to make sure he makes contact. Oh, strike oh. three called on the outside corner. And that's what you don't want. Perfectly thrown fastball, and that would have been a case right there with Simmons close to second. Now the outside corner had Davis been running, it could have been a strike and about throw out. This kid First can throw sense. behind the plate, and that is a perfectly thrown Lando. fastball after Jed Lowry got the three and two and fouled off a couple of pitches. So here's Yonder Alonzo. Alonzo at 242, a homer and 15 RBIs. A little bit low, but a close pitch. Much bandy the catcher is Alonzo trying to do something in this at bat, but when you have runners on base, the right hand, although you want to protect it, but watch what he does with his right hand. He's got to close so he can use both hands and his body to block the ball in the dirt and be prepared to throw. Some catchers will put the right hand behind their back, even with runners on base, and makes it difficult to get it in front enough to block a ball. And then if he takes off, there's a running even harder. Yeah, I was a pretty good catcher in his day, Mike Sosha. Looks like a fastball away. Yep. And he placed it perfectly there. So you can see why Shoemaker, well, he doesn't walk a lot of people. Yeah. He's got great control. That's perfect. I mean, really, the best thing Alonzo could do, take it. Because it's the first strike, and that was definitely a pitcher's pitch that he was hoping he would swing at it and roll into a ground uh, double play. But Alonzo trying to get the ball elevated, still runners at first and third. That one sliced foul. The shoemaker ahead in the count one and two. Yeah, Kev, I think what happens there is a perfect example of he has such a good splitter. That he's thrown a couple of times to strike out batters the first inning. But Alonzo gets a fastball. But he may be thinking just enough about the splitter sure. and he's late on it. 
So that's why you, you mix up the fastball and the splitter. You throw enough split finger fastballs to get them thinking about it. Another fastball away. And that one's driven right center field. Calhoun's going to get over there and he makes the catch. Spins around and fires it back in. Valencia comes in to score and a sacrifice fly by Alonzo gives the A's a 1 0 lead. Shoemaker did not Back throw the ball exactly where he wanted it, left it maybe in the middle of the play, and he thought it might have been gone. But you know what? He might have been thinking, Kai, is if Summons had held the ball, Valencia still be at second base. That's right. And it may have Valencia at third, but he would have been there with two outs. And sometimes you need an infielder. In this case, Escobar third to yell at Simmons, say, no, don't throw, you don't have a chance. And but that was costly, that error to put Valencia at third, and Alonso took advantage of it. Simeon goes after the first pitch, hits it high down the right field line. Calhoun on the move. Calhoun grabs it a step into foul territory. And that will do it for the A's, but they get a run and a couple of hits and a costly air by the Angels. One nothing A's after two. Insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot green and gold at athletics.com on your computer, tablet, or your smartphone. Select A's like Danny Valencia, Chris Davis, Josh Reddick, Rich Hill, Marcus Simmons. You can vote up to 35 times. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote at athletics.com slash vote. Or vote. D-O-G-T. Vote. So Escobar on one pitch grounds out to Valencia. So one out here in the top of the third A's with a one to nothing lead. Now batting number 56 Cole Calhoun. There's Cole Calhoun. Calhoun popped out to third. In his first at bat. In first strike. You know, Graven had enough run support last Sunday. Had he been able to stay in long enough to qualify for the win, he would have. Fernando Rodriguez came in and did get the win. Next night, it was Daniel Coulomb getting his first win. Is Sean Manaya, who says he's okay, which is good after experiencing some soreness in his left elbow or forearm. He's starting to play a little catcher, yeah, right? Yeah, which is good. Daniel Mingan pitched yesterday with the handlebar mustache. He's got the mustache downward now. I guess he only does it every five days. Game with, day. Yeah, with the handlebar. We saw last Saturday in Cincinnati. He said the humidity was bothering him a little bit, but he, that's why he kept turning it up. Mm. He thought maybe the, the wax wouldn't be waxy enough. 
Oh, that one's yeah. driven. Burns back deep right center, and it is gone. So Calhoun homers for the ninth time this year, and just like that, it's a 1 1 game. And a breaking ball that the pitcher with a good sinker got a one pitch out with Escobar. And to the right of the Xfinity sign in right center field, but there's a hanging curveball. That's hanger says, hit me, hit me, and he hit it strong enough to do exactly that. And it just to the left, uh, just to the left of the big wall, and Billy Burns was hoping for the camera. Watch this ball just go to the left, just enough. If it gone to the right of the Xfinity sign, it would have bounced back in a double, but Kendall more than anything probably upset with the fact that he hung a curveball. So here's Trout. Trout reached on an air in the first inning. So each team has made an air in the early going. Simeon scoops it as he ranges to his left. Trout is out, two out. And that'll bring up Albert Pujols. Very sinker ball pitcher. You want to keep. keep. The infielder's busy all night. And that is the fourth ground ball out. Make it the fifth. First pitch to Pujols is in for a strike. Albert Pujols is now 36 years old. His 16th year in the big leagues. He is in the fifth year of that 10 year contract. So, what he five more years after this one. What he did for 11 seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals is awesome. <laughs> Unmatched and unbelievable. Remember, remember Pools had surgery on his right foot in November. And when he got to spring training, he really was not ready to play first base. In fact, he did not play first base in a spring training game till the 28th of March. So they waited, and I'm sure they were very patient, make sure he's okay. And so he finally got in there at the end of spring training, and he's playing a lot of first base now. He is number 12 on the all time home run list with 572, one away from Harmon Killebrew. And that one just a bit outside, so Pujols has walked. He's been on base twice. I figure he is going to do that plenty of times, and that is walk, especially. And again, Marte swinging the bat well, and that's the reason he's the DH tonight, trying to play in the left field and keep his name or his Marte. his uh, game in the lineup, especially with a bat. But we've seen Pujols now, right? He still plays a decent first yes, base, he does. and he wants to play first. Yeah. So listen, will he be a DH at the end of, at the end of his career? Yes, but he's still very dangerous. And you have to maybe think of the same thing about Robinson Cano signing a similar sure. ten-year contract, and clubs give the length of the contract, warning for huge years in the first five to seven. But in case of Albert Pujols and Cano keeping the bats in the lineup, even at a later age, be very beneficial. And those kind of contracts are, are very long and uh, are they dangerous. Sure they are. But I think those teams understand that. Listen. We're probably going to be paying way way too much mm -hmm. at the end. Yeah. But with Pujols 10 year deal they're paying for the first six or seven. Exactly. Uh, the final two or three years. You, you're going to be writing big checks but. I think Pujols is going to be able to hit for quite a while yet. Probably when he's collecting Social Security. <laughs> I mean, he's, his bat speed <laughs> he's, still looks he's good. good. Uh, he's, he'll be able to hit. Oh. Two and two, the count to Jeffrey Marte. But you know, we, we talk often about protection and protection in this case. Do you face Pujols and throw him this pitch, or do you throw Marte, who's hitting behind him, the same pitch and? You get a take, and he's looking to right field, but Albert Pujols will be looking to left field and hit the ball out. So Mike Sosha, of course, he has Calhoun in front of Trout, Trout in front of Pujols. But 
you know, for Mike uh, Mike Sochi, he wants guys on in base, on base in front of those guys. So it's a little tough to pitch around them. Swing and a miss. Marte strikes out. Side. Retired home run for Cole Calhoun, his ninth of the year. 1-1 one, one game as we go to the bottom of the third. Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Casino Matrix, Silicon Valley's best bet for gaming, food, and fun 24-7. One to one. Hayes and the Angels, bottom of the third inning. Ah, the water tastes good, huh? So do the nachos look good. <laughs> First pitch to Max Muncie drops in for a strike. Muncie burns and crisp here in the bottom of the third inning. Good swing by Muncie. Fouls it just to our left. And for Max Muncie, of course, Father's Day is coming up this Sunday, but for Max, it's Parents' Day every day he plays because it seems like they're every place he does play. They travel, they Almost call them the traveling Muncie. Traveling now. Muncies. Yeah, we got the traveling Doolittles, but the Muncies are there, and uh, for Max, he loves it. Let's see, who else did we? we oh, they remember the traveling Loizas? That's right. He had oh. a and giant Col group of people pretty much everywhere. Bailey's, Colognes, yeah. yeah Beetle Bailey, <laughs> the Colognes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bartolo Cologne had his, his two sidekicks with him all the time. Oh, yeah. How about his? He got a double. And he oh, yeah. took third on a ball that was dropped and then scored on the sack fly. Yeah. Home run derby. Oof. He's going to be in the pitcher's home run <laughs> <Yeah>. derby. <laughs> as long as Bart doesn't have to run, he'll be fine. Yeah. Bartolo Colon. He had a couple assistants that, like I said, were yeah. with him on the road a lot. It was always really one of my favorite. Visuals was Bartolo Colon in the gym at the hotel <laughs> on the stationary bike, and he was working out, right? And his two assistants were standing right next to him in full workout clothes, but they were just standing there, staring at Bartolo Colon as he worked out. And this is the way it was every time Colon went into the gym. And I often wanted to ask those kids, "Why don't you guys work out?" They but were personal they, trainers. They were, well, they were personal. Stand around and stare at Bartolo Colon. <laughs> Bart was working out. <laughs> Barely. Yeah, he's. <laughs> Pujol stays down. Underhands to Shoemaker. So one out. And here's our Ford right choice. Yesterday, second career start for Daniel Migdon, and he was good. He took the loss, unfortunately. He's pitched well in both of his starts. 
He's 0 and 2, but yesterday, six and a third innings. Two runs, one earned run, and seven strikeouts. And Ray, what, did, I mean, did you see anything different from him yesterday? A lot of confidence. As opposed to Sunday? To, I mean, he's, had con he's a confident young man, and, you know, he only gave up one hit through the first six and, and two runs. He gave up a Desmond home run to right field, which uh, just snuck over the right field fence. But he, he actually, he went sometimes to a triple pump. We saw him a little double, right. but clearly feeling more comfortable then, right? Right. But I saw something yesterday, and I saw Eddie Montague, the umpire in chief, if you will, traveling as we see him often in the Bay Area. But the home plate umpire yesterday. It was Toby Bastner. Odor was the Odor was the hitter. And as he went into the windup with the double pump, Odor called timeout and Bastner gave it to him. Yeah, that's and and Eddie Montague said, I agree with you 100 percent He said once the guy starts the windup, he can do anything he wants. And he has to stay in the box. And Stephen Vogt was all over the home plate umpire. Bob Melvin came out. And the one thing that Mengen said it didn't bother me. He said, All I want to do is strike him out even that much more. Yeah. And he ended up striking him out, but the bottom line, he pitched great, and it looks like that he believes he belongs, and I think the way he pitches, I think everybody believes that. And fans here to yesterday enjoyed watching him in his first home start. That's hit hard and fair past Pujols down the right field line. Coco burning around first. Checks on Ron Washington, who's waving him to third. Here comes the throw offline, and it's a triple for Coco Chris. Coco got about 10 feet from second and he peaked at Ron yep. Washington and Wash was waving him around. Well, the one thing about a good base runner and Coco is in that category and that is you do not have to break stride by looking back. You pick up your third base coach and that way you can just continue to run. Coco was thinking he knew he had at least two. And as he gets to the point where he can see Ron Washington, that way he does not have to look back. It's like riding a bike. You look back, you're going to slow down. Yeah. And he just kept running. Ron Washington said, bring him. And he did. That's a base running video. Absolutely. Right there. That's perfect. He, that's, yeah. And he only looked at Wash once for just a second. And that's all he needed. That's all he needed is exactly. We've seen guys between first and second look back behind them into yeah. the right field corner. Yeah, Which always puzzles us a little bit. And I always reference a bicycle because you're riding a bike and you turn around and look what happens. You have to slow, slow down, down. And, you, and you may lose control of the bike. No well, question. it's the same thing running. And you, you, your third base coach, is, he's your eyes. And Ron Washington waved him and Ron could see that the ball was in the corner. Granted, it's it's at least a sure double is going to score on a base hit, but he could score other ways from third. So it's just great base running, great camera work to, to show Coco doing exactly that. Stephen Vogt struck out in the first inning. For Coco, that's his second triple of the year. Vogt swung over top, and that's the split finger pitch. So one and two. Well, the one thing about a run third, the splitter, and Coco with his speed and Escobar way off the bag. That one hit high in the air, shallow left. Nava's going to get there, side retired. So Coco Crisp is stranded at third, and we're through three. It's a one-one game.
on athletics one a triple for Coco Crisp his 21st or 24th career triple with the athletics now fifth in Oakland history in total triples he's unfortunately could not get him home so we're tied at one it's the top of the fourth inning Nava Giovatella and Bandy. Nava grounded out to second in the second. And Jed Lowry coming in a little bit closer to the actual dirt infield instead of playing him right field the way he was when he caught the ball earlier in the first at bat by Nava. Nava missed 28 games with the left groin strain. So just activated today. Two pitches inside. And certainly know all about the A's injury situation. But the Angels disabled list is almost as crowded as the A's. And for the Angels, they're just trying to hold together a Starting rotation. Of course, that's been a little bit of an issue for the A's as well. Coco moves over into left center field. He's got it. Hey, in honor of Father's Day this weekend, tonight's starter Kendall Graveman talks about his father. Me and him shared a bond through baseball and um, some other things that we grew up enjoying to do together, but baseball was the biggest. And it wasn't always just a teaching moment, but it was a spending time together moment. Uh, that an hour in the batting cage was something that you can't take away. And for him to do that was something that was really special. Well, nice stuff from Kendall Graven. I wonder if his dad, when he took the mound, wanted Sweet Home Alabama. Probably. <laughs> you're from Alabama, and you're going to ask for that song. Well, and, yeah, that's yeah. probably going to be a little yeah. bit of a theme song for you. And that's kind of a nice little thing when Kendall takes the mound. You hear that good song. Well, he's a nice young man, so yeah. you, you do pull for him. Hope he has a bright future in front of him. Valencia gets a nice hop off the grass. Giovatello's retired. But getting back to that disabled situation, see, for the Angels. And it has them scratching their head, but. Number 47. But Jared Weaver is not on the disabled list. That's really the only good news, but. Garrett Richards on the DL, CJ Wilson on the DL, Andrew Heaney on the DL, Tyler Skaggs on the DL. That's a pretty good rotation that's right a, there. It's a four man rotation, right. you're right. Don't forget about Nick Tropiano, who has pitched right. well against the A's. He's on the disabled. That's side Tropiano. Side Tropiano. <laughs> I mean, that's five. Yeah. You could run those five out there and you'd be okay with that. <laughs> Joe Smith, the, the setup man, hamstring, he's on the disabled list. Cliff Pennington, hamstring, he's on the disabled list. Craig Gentry, back, he's out. Giovanni Soto, who was yeah. doing some of their catching, knee, he's on the disabled list. That's a lot of, a lot of roster spots on the disabled list for the Angels, and I'm sure that has contributed to their 29 and 37 record. Good inning for Kendall Graveman. Bottom of the fourth coming up. We're tied at one.
for the game on Sunday, June the 19th, coming up a week, or actually the day after tomorrow. 20,000 fans will receive a baseball trading card pack presented by Tops. Bring Dan out to the ballpark for Father's Day and go home with a brand new pack of baseball cards. That's always special. Get your Father's Day tickets today at athletics.com slash tickets. So 1-1 one, one game, bottom of the fourth inning. A's run came in the second on a sacrifice fly by Yonder Alonso. It scored Danny Valencia, who's leading things off. Valencia doubled off the top of the right field wall, just missed a home run. So the batting average now for Valencia at 331. the lower part of the strike zone that every pitcher wants especially a sinker ball split finger fastball pitcher and again like Alonzo you don't necessarily have to swing at it it's a pitcher's pitch and until you get two strikes let it go this one foul to our right and he really moves the ball in and out Danny Valencia a 318 average with two strikes. That's very good. Double to nine on the one two pitch. And there's the splitter, and that's strikeout number four for Shoemaker. Yeah, good splitter, and that's three of the four strikeouts with this same type of pitch down in the zone and took a lot off the pitch, kept it down low, and Valencia swinging through it. I've had a chance today to visit with a good friend, Monty Moore. How's Monty doing? Monty's doing great. His wife, Dion, down in Porterville, and he usually would be coming up to the Community Fund Golf Tournament on Monday, All but right. uh, he's not going to be able to make it. But we wish him well, his wife, Dion, and great broadcaster for the A's back in the championships of the 72, 3, and 4, and came out with a team from Kansas City. So the great Monty Moore, always a big fan of A's baseball. Well, it's not. Golf tournament's no. not quite the same if Monty's not there. Well, he said if, if he came, he's going to bring his son Donnie to be his designated driver to get him here, and designated driver on the course. <laughs> Which, that's pretty smart. <laughs> Donnie's a good golfer. So, Monty, but uh, we'll miss him, but he and his wife Dion down in Porterville, and wish them well as always. That one's cool. driven center field. Trout's going back, and Baby's gone. A's lead two to one. Is he strong or what? Well, <laughs> you may make a mistake with this guy. He can take you deep. See the ball just tumbling now to the plate. And speaking of Monty Moore, this is his kind of play right here. Take a pitch straight away to center field. And that ball was crushed, and even the great Mike Trout couldn't run. So home run number 16 for Davis. Give him 45 RBIs. So the A's back on top. And now 2 0 to Jed Lowry. Lowry struck out looking in the second inning. And there's a hit. Right drive to right center field. Jed had to be disappointed his last to bat, leaving a runner at third base, but got the count in his favor on this at bat. And a 2 0 pitch, fastball stayed on it, did not pull this one foul, instead to right center. And Trout with a tremendous speed able to get to the ball quickly enough to prevent Jed from getting a double. So Alonzo steps up. Look at this. 
Those are base running gloves. Those are smooth. Wow. Batman. Put them on. They're special base running gloves. Check down to Corey Blazer, no swing. Alonzo picked up his 16th RBI of the year with that sacrifice fly in the second inning. Shift is on. Play Alonzo to pull on the infield to go the other way in the outfield with Nava, the left fielder, playing very shallow. And there's a split with the count one and zero. Oh, and we talked earlier about Matt Shoemaker not necessarily saving the splitter for two strikes. Pitchers will do that for a strikeout pitch, but he likes to throw it anytime. And you know, saying about pitching backwards, you throw soft with the fastball count, and that's what he did on the one zero -oh pitch. So one and one the count. Swing and a miss. And there's the splitter. So this year, the league is hitting 198 against the Shoemaker splitter, 199 last year. All other pitches he throws this year, 312. Well, now you. Now you know why he throws it so much. That's right, and he should. Really, it's a pitch that a lot of pitchers don't throw anymore. At one time, it seemed like everybody wants to throw the split. But I don't recall a whole lot of contact against the split finger no. tonight. And the thing is, he can vary the speeds on it, which makes it a more effective pitch to be able to throw it like a split changeup, or he can throw it hard to get the tumbling effect. And how about that? Uh, almost as many splitters as he has change our, our fastballs tonight. Pitch off the end of the bat. Simeon to follow here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Chris Davis home run has given the A's the lead. Lowry inches off first. The full count. We'll see if Lowry takes off. It's Charles Nagy yep. to Mike Sosha's left. Started the final game at Old Municipal Stadium. First year as the pitching coach for the yep. Angels. So he's had his hands full this year. Angels with the third worst ERA in the American League. Goes and the pitch is foul to the backstop. So Mike Butcher went to Arizona, didn't he? I think so, yeah. Angels third highest DRA and the third most airs. The A's the second highest DRA and the most airs. So similar numbers DRA wise in Error wise for these two teams. That throw over just maybe to try to keep Lowry one step closer in the event he does run again on the 3 2. Maybe give his catcher a chance. He, and of course, a lot of times a pitcher would throw over, it's going to be an off speed pitch. Let's see if he goes to the splitter again 3 and 2. That should not right, shook it off. Going fastball inside, it shook off the fastball away. Runner
There goes. Line drive and a base hit to right field. Calhoun's got a great arm. Here's the throw to third, and it is not in time. Lowry just in ahead of the tag. Yeah. Dana Ebel, the bench coach, on the phone just in case they thought they got a chance to get him at third base. But on the move with Jed Lowry and Yandra Alonso after foul of the pitches off outside got the fastball in and you're right a strong arm accurate throw by Calhoun and Lowry looking back to see where the ball was and Simmons out of the way feet first slide popped up and checking to see they said no throw Escobar went after it and just got him on the knee the right knee as the foot hit the bag. Escobar was hoping that the throw would be right on the bag, but that's a great shot. The feet first slide, he could have done a little fadeaway and grabbed the bag with his hand, but Escobar could not apply the tag quickly enough. So here's Marcus Simeon. Simeon bunts at it and fouls it. Simeon hit a fly ball to right field foul territory in the second inning. So an opportunity for the A's to add on. They've already got one in this inning. Misses and the count one and one. Oh, Marcus Simeon and Kipe just look at the hole on the right side. I mean, tremendous hole. First baseman uh, Pujols holding the runner Lonzo, and there is a hole is so big to stay inside the ball, shoot it to right field. Still not more and more. Close pitch, but missed. And yeah, Giovatelli's. He's like standing right yeah. around second base. But I think what we have seen is Marcus Simeon staying inside and, and shooting the ball to right field. And this is uh, something you can learn from somebody as great as Albert Pujols because you take the run batted in where they're expecting you to pull the ball and they're going for a double play. Check swing tapped up the third baseline, but it kicks foul. Kind of a strange ball came off the bat a little weird. It was a check swing and it was inside and Marcus I don't think knew where the ball was but once it hit the ground with a big spin took it in the foul territory. So pitch number 70 coming up for Shoemaker. He had a three up three down first inning but he's been in trouble in each of the next three innings. Swing and a miss a big strikeout for Shoemaker. Seems like he knows just when to go to that pitch. Uh, the split and look at the location down threw it hard and you know, the old saying about a the ball you see it low let it go and you can also do it with the split if you can see the tumble although that one does have a different look to it as it's approached the plate Exmo you can see it a lot better that way than the hitter can when he's 60 feet six inches away a lot of times the hitter will swing at the motion of the pitcher and that's why if you can throw it near the plate Ryan Dull did it yesterday with the bases loaded with Elvis Anders throwing a 3 2 slider that was out of the strike zone, but he was looking fastball, swung, and missed it. So see if Muncie can come through with two outs. Alonzo runs, throw to second base, is offline. So Alonzo with a steal. I don't know that anybody they're not holding him at first base and Alonzo looking back but it was a split a good one and thrown hard Simmons doing a good job to keep the ball from going into center field but Jet and not or Bandy 
Jet Danny did not look at third. He pretty much just threw straight, straight through to second. Muncy lays off in the count one and one. That ball, that throw to second base looked like it came very close to hitting Alonzo. Yeah. If it hits him, it probably allows Lowry to come in and score. High fly ball, shallow left. Nava is there, and that'll do it. So Chris Davis with another home run. He has 16 on the air, and this one gives the ace the lead. 2 1 Athletics after four. CSN California is brought to you by PG&E, together building a better California. It's the top of the fifth inning, and it's a two-to-one A's lead. Simmons, Escobar, and Calhoun to hit for the Angels. Angels just ah. won two out of three at home over the Minnesota Twins. They will play this weekend series here in Oakland, and then they will go to Houston for three, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Back home, host the A's for four. So the A's and the Angels seven games in the next 10 days. And for the Angels, remember they were swept by the Twins back at Target Field. They were two and four against Minnesota, and they finally beat them two straight. First time they had won two straight in a while, the Angels. Got some talent, but when you have a lot of talent on the disabled list, it makes it tough to win. Yeah. There's been a lot of discussion in the last couple off seasons about the Angels. They got Trout, they got Pujols, two of the best hitters in all of baseball. They needed somebody else. They need another guy. And they really have not dipped into the free agent market. Calhoun's a good player, but part of the problem, Ray, is they're paying Josh Hamilton $24 million this year and $24 million next year. And he's not with them. Graveman quickly off the bat. Fires to first in time. So I think the point is, is it was a questionable contract at the time. We all know that, and Hamilton did not perform real well. But that's a major, major issue. You know, I don't care how much money you have as an organization. When you're paying somebody, we're not talking six or seven, million, $24 million this year and the same amount next year, you're not going to be able to go out and sign a Cespedes or 
you know sign a left fielder. Everybody says, oh, the Angels need a left fielder. And then the contract that Mike Trout signed and Albert Pujols, Jared Weaver signed a good contract. So it's Artie, Artie Moreno has been a good owner yeah. as far as players concerned. But you're right, and, and you're paying that kind of money, and, and you know, oh. one time you could probably look at 24 being, you know, two great players in today's world, maybe one, but yeah. maybe two, and looking at two years doing that. Sure, that's exactly right. So now. And, and even as Escobar strikes out and Ray even last year yeah. Hamilton that's I right. mean, you paid him last year too right. and you you traded him. Good chase slider from Kendall Graven and Escobar the aggressiveness of Escobar. He does not wait around and took advantage of it with a slider off the plate. And, and Hamilton's out all year. He's not even going to help the Rangers. And who knows if he ever play again? But I mean, I, it, it just—I think it's. You're right it about just it. seems like a contract that that is going to kind of haunt the Angels yeah. for a while yet. At least till they pay it off. Yeah. <laughs> but you can give Mike Trout a six-year, hundred and forty million dollar contract because you know what he's going to do. Albert Pujols, his contract is huge, but he's out there. He's producing big time. And the trout is going to still be very young when he gets his next contract. And sure, the Angels will be first in line to try to extend him before he has a chance for free agency. And he's ripped foul. But even in the offseason, they traded for Simmons. Yeah. They signed Pennington, but that's a small, we're talking small change there. And then the point I'm making is just you, there's free agent players that they could sign exactly. if, if they want loaded down with what they have to pay Hamilton. Oh, and two to Calhoun. Twig and a miss on a high fastball. Three up, three down. And for Graven, he picks up a couple of strikeouts. Bottom of the fifth coming up. The top of the order for the A's. To give first through eighth grade students the chance to earn two free tickets to a game with the A's Mathematics Workbook Program, which engages students to solve baseball related equations. For more information, visit athletics.com slash mathletics. Not athletics, mathletics. Get it? Yeah, mathletics. It? Yeah. As in math. Athletics. Saw that great shot of the Comcast Sportsnet value deck right yeah. above us. Right. It's that time, isn't it? Yeah. Friday night. Looked like some people were sporting that the giveaway cap.
One and one the count to Billy Burns followed by Coco Crisp and Stephen Vogt. Bottom of the fifth Matt Shoemaker. He's given up six hits he struck out five. And that's his pitch to go to right there. That's the giveaway. Look at that. Yeah. It's important to climb over as many people when you get into the aisle. <laughs> Escobar into foul territory grabs it. Well, the A's have a new fan. His name is Oliver Joseph Zickenbush. You know Josh Zickenbush, don't you? Yeah. You know, down the ticket office. Yes. Well, he and his wife Monica had a new baby boy. I didn't even know that. Oh. Congratulations. Yeah. And so Alexander, the little sister. Yeah. Sounds like Jack taking care of Annie, you know. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Well, not as much as it should. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations to the Ziegenbush family. Eight, what, one pound boy. All right. Oliver Joseph. So, I like in. that name, Oliver. Oliver, yeah, he's a new A's fan. Working with Josh in no time. Coco Crisp has struck out and tripled. Hey, as much as you like offense, these are good games. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, I yesterday with what Daniel Minkin did in his second major league start, first at the Coliseum, and of course the veteran Kobe Lewis, and they went head to head for six innings. One hit. The Rangers got no hits for the Athletics. Check swing and Coco just to watch the head of the bat. That was enough when the head of the bat, you know, those the bats are heavy. I mean, the top end. And so when they start to swing, looks like they're holding up. But whenever it goes just a little bit across the plate, that's enough to be called a strike. Change up one and two or splitter, excuse me. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, if, if, if I had to choose one or the other, I'd, I'd rather. See a good pitchers do it. Absolutely. Our guys are throwing strikes. Monty Moore likes offense though. You know. Does that. he really? Oh, yeah, he'd love offense. He'd he'd like to have those 12 to 11 games. So he would have been a good Coors <laughs> Field announcer. <laughs> but you know, he, he he happened to broadcast with teams that Catfish would say, I just need a run today. And so give him a run. But and also say if you need 10, yeah, big, I mean, big boys can bring out the bats, and Monty loved that. But would you not agree that I mean your A's teams oh. were, were I mean were really the epitome of great pitching that's great it. defense right. and get a couple big hits and that's or a home run that's here. it and, and you think of the offense that the clubs had during that period of time but it was pitching and defense to the point that Dick Williams said we don't give extra outs Nava backs up just a little bit two away. Because as we have learned in the great game of baseball, you make errors, you give up unearned runs. That doesn't help you win ball games, and that, that usually is a column you look at in the statistics package. How many runs? How many unearned runs or earned runs? And you could do the math, and you lose games because of errors and extra extra outs. And good teams play great defense and have pitching and score just enough runs to win. And tonight, great example of another pitcher's duel for the A's. Kendall Graven at this point leading two to one. Steven Vogt comes up, shows butt, and takes a strike. And that's the case right there of a pitcher using a first pitch splitter. And where it's not a great pitch for a hitter to bunt and with the shift to the right side. Steven Vogt, a strikeout and a fly ball to left field. Pitch count creeping up on Shoemaker. He's at 86. And 108 pitches in that last outing where he went eight shutout innings. Shoemaker, a much different pitcher when there's nobody on base. Yeah. He really slows it down when he has runners on, but 
Gets it, he's ready to go. Three one is up and away. That's a walk. And that's rare, folks, because he walked one in his last start. He went 26 days without walking about. <laughs> 26 days. And that's a pitch count for him where he stands on the season. How about this comment? I went so long, I couldn't remember when I last walked a batter. That's pretty good. 49 strikeouts before he walked a batter, and he walked one in his last start. It was Carlos Santana, and he walks Stephen Vogt tonight. And it was the walk yesterday that ended the perfect game for Kobe Lewis, a four pitch walk to Yonder Alonso. That was in the eighth inning. And he walked two in a start against the Dodgers on May 16th. And then went four starts without walking anybody. And then that last start, he walked one, like you just said. So I can see where he'd forget. <laughs> I'll go almost a month without walking. Yeah. You. But it, you know it's it's great from his standpoint because that's a good low fastball. But he's thrown some split finger fastballs for strikeouts that have been out of the strike zone, and that's what a good split finger fastball will do for a pitcher successfully, and I'm not so good against for a hitter. Sitting at 90 pitches, 32 balls, 58 strikes. So one and one to Valencia doubled and scored and struck out. Missed again two and one. Major shift on in the infield for Valencia. He could trickle one through the right side. Trout playing slightly toward left center but very deep. And that would, I think it hit the umpire. Yep, Throw a second, and they got him. It, so that it, is a tough break for the Athletics. The ball went past the catcher, hit the umpire. Bandy picked it up and threw him out at second base. Cold Hard Facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Mike Trout wins above replacement. He's at 10 this year. That's one of the, uh, I guess we'll call it a new statistic. It's called War Wins Above Replacement. And I can tell you that 10 is really good. Now, wins above replacement is basically if there was a average player out there, right? Whatever average means. What a play by Valencia. Scoops it, throws it, got it. There's your average, above average play. <laughs> that's, a, that's an above average play by Danny Valencia. 
Wow, he hit the ball hard and Valencia down to his knees and then had to get up quickly. And you can't not take too much time with Mike Trout. He got him by a full step, but he crushed it, got on the short hop, and then a double crow hop and a nice scoop by Alonzo, which he does it so well anyway. Just get it close to him. So the first pitch is a strike to Pujol. So war, right? Am I right? It's yeah. It's you have it. somebody else. He average player yeah, yeah. statistically. Right. If he was playing center field for the Angels, but he's not. Mike Trout is. So they're saying that Mike Trout helps them win yeah. ten games more than the average player. So then the Angels would be 19 and 47. I was say, so that's yeah. <laughs> With that average player out there. Now it's a it's a stat that is used but that's incredibly hot and very hot. Yeah. yeah that's a lot of W's. So he has it. So this is the play that ended the bottom of the fifth and the ball did hit the umpire and watch Danny Valencia scoots right through hits the umpire and Valencia said hold up hold, hold up stop. and. and and he does throw well, and he made a great throw to second base. And Stephen Vogt, you get halfway, you go, oh no, that ball is not to the backstop, and I don't have a chance to to beat it to second base. And you know, as a catcher, he knows the ball goes through the catcher. He hopes it goes to the backstop, but Valencia did put up his hand once he saw the ball staying close. He thought maybe Andy had blocked it, but he definitely got some help from Doug Eddix. Yeah, I think I think Vogt took four steps yeah. and said, oh. yeah. This was not a good idea. One and one the count. In the meantime, Kendall Graveman's been terrific. Yeah. He's about to make his 80th pitch. He's retired nine in a row. Six innings of one hit baseball against the Angels back in April and given up the home run to Calhoun on the breaking ball. I, to be honest, I don't know that I've seen a curveball since the, <laughs> cur the home run he gave up. Well, I was just thinking it seems like he's throwing a lot of fastballs, which yeah. is good. 68% yeah. fastballs, 24% cut fastballs. And actually 1% curveballs. There you go. That's but good. It's a, it's a 5%, so just one. But I think the point was we talked about it in the pregame show is maybe with Kendall Graven he's got such a good sinker. Keep throwing. And you know that's what Bob Mullen said. You've got a sinker, use it, get ground balls because that's your specialty. And, and you know, you, you can learn. See, that would be a fastball, fastball, curveball, and he stepped off. So maybe second thought, because if two is a curveball, that's what he agreed to. And I don't know that that's the pitch to throw on three and two. Fastball away. That's a good pitch. And he's going to get a ground ball out. Simeon fires to first. Nicely done by Kendall. Craven. So three ground ball outs, bottom of the sixth coming up. Valencia, Davis, and Lowry will hit two one A's.
Brought to you by McDonald's on this date in 2008. The A's hit six home runs in Arizona. Ellis, Chavez, Suzuki. I want to see if I can get them all. Crosby, Ellis, Roger. Oh, man. I faintly remember that. It's good. Mark Ellis hit two. Yeah. Is that when we fell off the booth? No, remember. that was a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> when we sat on the booth, yeah. almost fell out on the field. Seat broke. It wasn't our fault. No, it was not. Of oh. course, maybe we could have backed off in the lunchroom cool. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, they could put some stronger boards yeah, out, that's right. which they finally did. Bottom of the sixth inning, and it's a two to one A's lead. Valencia was at bat when Bolt was thrown out. Well, if nothing else, I think the A's got a chance to see Jet Bandy in his strong arm, and he has been impressive throwing out base runners and was not a caught stealing but Bandy reacted when the ball hit Doug Eddings and he has picked it up and flat footed through the ball to second. So Morin the right hander Alvarez the left hander Jose Alvarez is the only lefty the Angels have. Two and one now Valencia the double and the strikeout scored a run. You know it's amazing Kevin go back to Milwaukee Cincinnati you think about the clubs the A's are facing and have faced. One lefty in the bullpen. Yeah, that's right. And Sigrani with the red. Yeah. Milwaukee only had one, right? Yeah. And then the A's have three. Broken back. Right now, three lefties. That's that's a manager's delight to have that many lefties and back in. Got Scotty catching the balls. Took the hoodie off with the double ear double ear flap on and Yeah, got it. A bit. <laughs> he gave the uh, yeah. the circle okay. Yeah, yeah he's it. Everything's cool. <laughs> See, sometimes you just don't, you know, you don't need to respond verbally. It's just a simple hand <laughs> signal. It's more powerful. <laughs> and when you're cool like Scotty, yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. Thumbs up or a, a thumb and forefinger, yeah. and pretty much everything's good to go. Emo can just relax knowing that Scotty's got him covered. A little smile, thinking about himself. <laughs> He's got it going, man. I'm telling you. Three and two now to Valencia. That's 10 pitches in this at bat, it's although it finished this at bat to less at bat because he finished the, the fifth inning. It's the big, powerful, strong man, Chris Davis, now on deck circle. Already a big home run to give the A's a two to one lead. Once he shoots one foul down the right field line. He's with six hits in the game. The Angels with just three. Yeah, oh, they're going wow. the knees on the inside wow. line. Valencia chewing on Doug Eddings a little bit. Well, that's that's questionable really in a couple spots inside back candidate was uh, the catcher and down low and you know he started the first base he stops because he hears Doug Eddings yell strike and that's questionable. Well that last one showed that it was low yeah. and it may have been inside as well. So here's Davis. Davis has single and home swing. This is home run in the fourth inning. Gave the A's the two to one lead. 101 pitches now for Shoemaker. This was the home run by Davis. 
when he makes contact, you just wonder how far is it going to go, and that's what he did on this breaking ball. And look out, Cameron. He's below them. And a salute to Ron Washington. He's done that a whole bunch of times. How about 16 times this year? Runs inside to Davis. Last year, Davis 27 home runs in 121 games. This year, 16 home runs in 62 games. He's ahead of his pace, but he strikes out there. Back to back strikeouts for Shoemaker. A split down and in after the fastball to Valencia. Question more. You see the. The tumbling, you see the split of the fingers. Index and middle finger to get the split finger fastball grip. And that's why pitchers who can throw it, it looks like a fastball, but the farther you split the fingers, the index and the middle finger, the farther you spread those fingers. As a result, it's called a split. The closer together, the harder you can throw it, the more you separate them. The tumbling effect and the same delivery as a fastball makes it a very effective pitch. Interesting our expo replay when you see the rotation of the baseball when it's a regular fastball you see how much it spins That's right, and you see how much a slider really spins, yeah. but the splitter you're right it, it 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 spins but but Not nearly as much It's kind of a, a different rotation and you can see it Kind of floating downward Well, that last shot uh, as, you, as you mentioned the center field camera you can see the fingers spread and then the Kind of a tumbling effect. It, yep. it tumbles. It doesn't have any direct spin on it. Lowry, that's one foul left side. And actually, a great way. Now watch the fingers. This is. The see previous, that's, that was the fastball. See how it's. I mean, it's really yeah, spinning, yeah, rotating. Right. But if as, as a young kid, if you want to learn how to split, uh, throw a changeup, just spread your fingers. You don't have to do anything special. And you know Roger Craig, home baby. You know he, he's how he taught the changeup, and eventually turned into split for major league pitchers. But he just spread the fingers, and you throw it like a fastball. Well, the more you spread them, the less of velocity you have. Versus closer together, and that's why the two and the four seam fastball are throwing harder. Oh, two pitch off the leg of Shoemaker, right to Giovatella. That's pretty nice play by Shoemaker. Nice assist. Little kick save and a beauty. 2 1 after six. Well brought to you by T-Mobile. Scores from the AL West. Mariners get a win tonight in Boston. 8-4 is the final there. The Reds and the Astros in extra innings in Houston. That game tied 2-2. And the Rangers beat the Cardinals 1-0 in St. Louis. So 
Mm, see, that was the 2011 World Series, right? It's Adam Wainwright, too. Yeah. At least started for the, the Cardinals. Well, good game there. Yeah, that was a, a big one. That was a David Freeze, a former Cardinal and former Angel. Who hit the big triple over Nelson Cruz head. Saw the note on Franklin Gutierrez, two homers, six RBIs for the Mariners. Cano also homered. Cano has 19 home runs. David Ortiz homered for the Red Sox. Yeah, sure he's going to retire. 521, <laughs> so he ties Williams, McCovey, and Thomas. How about that? See Ryan Dole starting to throw for the A's in the top of the seventh. Well, if David Ortiz does retire, he will retire with probably the greatest numbers ever yep. in the history of baseball for the final year. And I, you know, I have not heard him waver no. yet. See, that could change. Could be something to be said about going out on top. Yeah, that's true. At least from an individual performance standpoint. Lowry in a couple steps has it. Nava is retired. He's 0 for 3. Okay, but in our beginning, we talked about the sinking fastball. And the infielders have been busy. Kendall Grayman throwing a great sinker tonight. Number 12, Johnny. That is a thing of beauty. You know, he, he in New York, when he won the game in New York, he hung a breaking ball or tried try to throw a fastball into Edie Gregorius, hit a home run, and he changed his philosophy on how to pitch the Yankees there. And tonight, that's not what he's wanting, but it's going to be an out. Plenty of room for Burns, who grabs it. Boy, what a performance yeah. by Kendall Graben. Maybe we're not. Given him enough camera time here, yeah. huh? Well, <laughs> he's, been great. Listen, he, he's not throwing a lot of pitches no, to man. see himself on the camera that much. But yeah. last two starts, four and a third against Houston at Houston. Of course, the four plus in Cincinnati last Sunday because of the weather. And there you have it. The last time with 10 ground ballouts came on April the 12th against the Angels. That was in his second start. He has 11 tonight. And he's retired 12 in a row. First pitch, sinker for a strike. He had nine against the Yankees here, nine at New York. So the two starts against the Angels and the Yankees, double figures against the Angels, and nine in two starts against the Yankees. So Jose Alvarez. The only one throwing now at the bullpen. 0 oh, 2 the count to Jet Bandy, who has struck out and hit a fly ball to right field. On the ground, Simeon knocks it down, picks it up, throws in time, side retired. An eight pitch inning for Kendall Graben. He has been terrific so far. 2 to 1 A's lead, seventh inning stretch time.
Rockies Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. Here we get in-depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai tonight at 10:30, and it's on CSN Bay Area. The Warriors getting ready for Game Seven on Sunday. And a report on Tim Lincecum, who will face the A's tomorrow, right here at the Coliseum. How about that story? And U.S. Open Day Two highlights. Dallas Smith and Fareed will host. The Warriors and the Cavs on Sunday late afternoon right next door. Game seven. Win or go home. <laughs> yeah, you are going home. Yeah, you're going home. But it's time sure. for change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and repair experts. So Jose Alvarez the lefty comes in. A couple of starts against the A's back in April. Giovatella dies, can't get it, and Alonzo has a base hit. And Josh Reddick took batting practice in the cage for the first time. Said he felt pretty good. Yep. So it is possible. If he feels okay tomorrow that he could start a rehab assignment on Sunday. And once you get to that rehab assignment, well, then you're not that far off. Yeah. And the A's are looking forward to him. They're, Bob Melvin's hopeful about the, the Giants series. It'll be at the end of the month, so he has up to 20 games that he can go out on rehab as a position player. But Josh Feckley's comments, he had the big three run home run against Wilhelmson the other night. It was uh, on Monday, but he said going out on rehab, getting some at bats really helped him. Certainly seems like it would. Yeah. Well, if you get the opportunity, why not? You don't lose service time. It's more on the right hander, and Smolinski's come out the on deck circle for Muncie, although he, until he's announced, that would not be official. So Bob uh, Melvin may put him in, and Mike Sosha can make the decision. He's going to bring the righty in. And Jake Smolinski, who's been alternating, platooning in a sense, with Muncie in right field. Against lefties. And Doolittle getting ready for the A's. One, two pitches, tap slowly to short. Out at second, Giovatella on the first, not in time. Quick turn by Giovatella, but just ball was not hit hard enough. Uh, Jake has been announced. Mike Sosha wanting to Doug Eddings if he'd been announced. There's the throw and Givatella with the slide directly into the bag by Alonzo. So a uh, pinch hitter and a new pitcher. As a result of the pinch hitter. So we'll have a righty on righty matchup when we come back.
Giants games of 2016 at the Oakland Coliseum win the Cross Bay rivals square off on June 29th and 30th. A's look to continue their winning ways against the Giants having captured two of the last three season series. These interleague showdowns are always some of the most popular games of the year so get your tickets today at athletics.com slash tickets. Always nice to come to the Coliseum and close your eyes and just listen to the crowd. But you just never know. <laughs> it's kind of a fun two games. Yeah, it is. It's always fun. Both teams representing there. Spolinski hits the first pitch he sees to right and hits it well. Calhoun spinning around near the wall, and he makes the catch. Jake does not wait around. He did not there, and the ball just did not carry well enough for him to at least get off the wall, but he hit it very well. But Caught by the right field. High fastball and Jake Smolinski. As a pinch hitter, you the old Sam come off the bench swinging and he does it to the extreme. Just could not get it over Cole Calhoun's head, who is an outstanding right fielder. Cole Glover, very strong arm and moves very well in the outfield. So two outs for Burns. So Warren throws one pitch, gets Smolinski. Pitch is tapped towards second. Giovatella has it inside retired. So nice job by Morin. He gets the two outs he needs. And we are headed to the eighth. Ace hanging on 2 1. Tonight, but the A's will also honor Americans, service men and women on Saturday, July the 2nd. That will read the third fireworks with a salute to Armed Forces fireworks presented by PlayStation at the 705 A's versus the Pirates game. Enjoy patriotic music during the show, which coincides with the long Independence Day weekend. Fans can watch the fireworks show from the outfield grass. As always, your on-field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks. Nothing better than a 4th of July themed fireworks and that will be here at the Coliseum. So when it's time for change think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and repair experts. Sean Doolittle throws one pitch to Andrelton Simmons and he rolls it right over the bag and down the left field line and Coco has trouble picking it up Simmons thought about third now the ball comes all the way through. Simmons stays at second and that's a leadoff double. Well, first pitch fastball hitting and happened to be towards the inner half of the plate. So inside the line, no movement at all by Valencia. Could not get to it. And Coco tried to cut it off and it got caught in the inside and between his legs, six. fortunately, hit you his know, foot and kept it close enough to him that Simmons not want to take a chance getting thrown out of third. So the tying run at second, nobody out. Now see how the Angels go about this. 
trying to tie this game up. Escobar dancing off with Simmons, but he used to not have a middle infielder there, so Matson starts to throw now. Sometimes a game can a game can be saved in the eighth inning. Smolinski now in right field. Escobar takes a fastball right there for strike. So Grayman was terrific. Seven innings gives up just the one run. This one's bunted. Doolittle picks it up. He'll throw to first. So Escobar decided to get him over with a bunt, and he does. Well, the biggest batter is coming up right now, and that is Cole Calhoun. As the infield will have to play no, in, and Cole Calhoun. Breaking so this ball, be a great matchup. Yeah. And the breaking ball they got from Kendall Graven, the only blemish for Kendall Graven. Seven very strong innings, hanging breaking ball, curve ball, and just to the left of the the higher sign or the higher wall in right field. Could not keep it in the park, so. Calhoun will face the hard throwing left hander. Sean Duda. With the infield in. First pitch, Calhoun took a rip, loses his bat, fouls the ball straight back. This will probably be the at bat of the night. Exactly. With the game clearly yeah. on the line. Trout is next, but he's can imagine. Coming right at you. Here it comes. And be careful on deck hitter or bat boy. Up and away to Cole Calhoun. What Rudet Odor did the other night was hard to believe. That was a an 0 2 fastball from Sean Doolittle. Up and away. <laughs> he crushed it to right, right field. Fastball is way high. 2 and 1, 96 miles an hour. That one too high. It's that one right about at yeah. the letters that hitters just cannot lay off of. Well, and Stephen Vogt also, at least he anticipated the pitch being up that high because at mid 90s and above, Trying to go up and get a fastball like that's always difficult, but at least he anticipated it was there. Two-one pitch, had a good swing, fouls it into the upper deck, bounces down into the second level, and a fan just walking by, grabs it and just keeps right on moving. Thirty-second appearance for Doolittle. He's seventh in the league in appearances. 35 strikeouts in 27 innings. Off the plate with a fastball, and now it's three and two. I not think he will be facing Doolittle, regardless of what happens. Calhoun, though, see if the number one goes down quickly. That's a fastball. That's the inner half of the plate. And he popped it up. Valencia right at third base, and he's got it. Two outs. And as big as a strikeout, that is all that matters. He got the infield pop up, and Bob Melvin will go to Ryan Matson. And Stephen Vogt wanted the fastball in, and he set up on the inner half of the plate. And Sean Doolittle did exactly what he had hoped to do. Got it in there. It was up a little bit, and Cole Calhoun very upset that he could not drive it deep enough to drive in the run. So Madsen coming in to face Trout should be a good matchup.
TSN Bay Area as we get you set for the Warriors in Game 7. How about that? Game one after every Warriors playoff game. Greg Papa, St. Roz, and Leonard Azabuki provide the in-depth coverage. What else do you need to say? It's Game 7. Game 7. Steph Curry gets LeBron James. Ryan Matson against Mike Trout. That's true. That's yeah. better right now. <laughs> right now. Good call. But that's a good one coming up on Sunday. But right now the A's trying to do this. And this matchup actually back on April the 12th, Kendall Graveman's game. And Kai, if I know you remember it well, a couple of runners on base and he struck out Mike Trout on a changeup, on a one-two changeup. But then Albert Pujols fought off a couple of changeups and finally hit a double to drive in two. And then the Angels have scored two in the ninth on the Soto home run. Trout to right field. And Matson's going to get Mike Trout. How about that? Stay with the fastball too. That third. So and that matchup goes to Ryan Matson. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Good one tonight. 1 4 1 for the Angels, 2 7 1 for the Athletics. Shoemaker was good. Graven was better. Chris Davis with a home run. Cole Calhoun with a home run. And it is the bottom of the eighth, a pitcher's duel. It's up to the A's bullpen now to save it for Graveman. An insurance run would not be a horrible idea. <laughs> Mike Warren stays in. And the first pitch to Coco Crisp is driven to center. Trout is right there. So one away. Make sure you join us tonight on A's Post Game Live for the A Team. Vince, Ken, Ray, and myself will get together and have an unscripted roundtable discussion about tonight's game. It's only on A's Post Game Live and 95.7 the game. And it's all coming up after the game. Vince Catronio will lead the charge as he always does. Vinny has the uh, dress shirt on tonight, sport coat. Mm -hmm. so. A couple of sport coats in the back of the booth. He's ready for it. Corax got a sport coat too tonight. Yeah, yeah. He's, wow. he's gonna be ready. Michael Baird in the background there. Great engineer for the radio see, network. See, the thing is, is when we show the guys on radio, I mean, there are we're all together, right? We're yeah. the four broadcasters, but they think we're we're talking about it, <laughs> like we're making fun of them. So they always look over here, like they're kind of mad at us. Yeah. But what we're really doing is just saying nice things about it. We're complimenting them. Yeah, I mean, they those two are terrific. They do a great job. They've been together for a long time. Mike but they Moore say, what were you guys saying about it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. Thanks. 
Doug Eddings took his mask off, so if Valencia wanted to say anything to him, he could say it without him having to look through his mask based on his last at bat. But Mike Morton has come in. He's faced four batters, or make it uh, yeah, four batters, and he's thrown five pitches, all strikes. He got three outs on three pitches. But he is pitching well. And A's still trying to get the insurance run, and Valencia maybe will try to do it himself. In the first strike to Valencia. Valencia, a double and a run scored in the second, and then a couple of strikeouts. Fastball, 93 miles an hour for Mike Moore. Indians beat the White Sox 3 to 2, a walk off home run for Carlos Santana. It's a big win for the Indians at home. Mike Moore, the reliever for the Angels pitching, and pitching well has a, a unique setup. Starts in the stretch, then winds up and goes back to the stretch. And, but it's working. And that's all that matters. Bullpen's getting a chance to work a lot. I want you to take his left foot and go back. Exactly, and then bring it back and then go in the stretch. Settles in. <laughs> so I mean that's that's okay as long as there's not a runner on base. So Valencia got a pitch up and he rips it into center for a hit. Well, that ball had a weird hook to it. Yeah, it was a hanging slider, and too bad Danny couldn't get under it to drive the ball. But see the ball, there's your spin, Kai, on the slider, but it stayed up. He wanted it down in a way, it stayed up. And Mike Horn is fortunate that that ball went to center field as a base hit instead of into the seats as a solo home run. So eight hits now for the A's, and that'll bring up Chris Davis. Davis a single, a homer, and a strikeout. Hang that slider to him. The A's have a three-run lead. Because with his uppercut on a on a high slider, it will trap. Ooh. And he got one. He lines it to <laughs> Simmons, who grabs it. Ball knocks him over. He stays with it. And throws out Valencia at second base. Ninth inning coming up. Manson trying to save it. Two on A's.
So Madsen and Pujol squaring off here with a one run lead for the A's in the top of the ninth. Another fun matchup. Madsen got yeah. Trout to end the eighth inning with the tying run at third base. Pujol single walk and a ground out. John saw three pitches and three fastballs. He struck out on a changeup back in April and looked like he might have been sitting changeup again, but got the fastball and ended up hitting the ball to right field. Matson, a great changeup, a great fastball. Broken bat. Simming in the hole. Straightens up, throws, got it. Well, he knew he had time yep. and he took his time. That's a great point and he used the ground and deep in the hole. Here's the change up circle change up and Pujols out in front and broke his bat and all the splinters but in the hole but watch Marcus Simeon catches it backhand sets himself throws it hard but into the ground as Alonzo says nice throw you try to air mail it you don't get as much on it or you might throw it into the seats put a runner in scoring possession instead he bounces the ball perfect hop to get Albert to lead off this ninth inning. So one out. Here's Jeffrey Marte. Swing and a miss by Marte. No one one to Marte, who has hit a fly ball to the center, struck out, and grounded out. A little bit high, one and one the count. Daniel Nava will be next. Just four hits on the night for the Angels. And that one hit hard. Simeon dives, he's got it. He gets up, throws to first, not in time. Heck of an effort by Marcus Simeon. It's too much speed this time by Marte, and it's going to be a pinch runner for him. But shading him and had to go into the hole to the grass and the dive and try to quickly unload it. Alonzo, very, very smart move coming off the back at first base, and not much of a chance for Simeon to throw him out. Please, and, and Alonzo realizing Angeles, that coming off the back. Todd Cunningham running for Jeffrey Marte. So Marte will get a hit and Todd Cunningham is going to be the pinch runner. And Daniel Nava is going to be the hitter. So Cunningham is the tying run. He's got a good lead at first. And that's him. Checks on him. Johnny Giavatella is the on deck hitter. Well, it should. Nava hit the ball to the left side. I hope it's at Valencia, but that means Simeon, the shortstop, has to cover because the overshift to the right side. A little bit inside, 1 0. Oh. Missed by a whole lot. So, tense moments, and really, it's been a tense, tight ball game from. The very early part of the game. And there's a strike to even the count at one and one. A's got a run in the second. Angels got a run in the third. A's got another run in the fourth. A uh, good fastball inside part of the play. And you'd have to think some of these Angels, knowing Matson, sitting on the changeup, and so far a couple have not gotten a try. Pujols did. Cunningham looks fast, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like he wants to go in the worst way. And as a result, they know the numbers, like Sosha, whether he has a green light or not. Don Rinnick, the third base coach, really in the signs. 
Looks like he's in a sprinter's yep. speed. Not going. And that one's driven toward right field. Coming on is Smolinski. He dives and they called it out. And this is going to be a game ending double play. And Alonzo steps on the bag. Mike Sosha says, hold on. Yeah, they're going to take I don't it. know. I don't know, folks. Yeah. I mean, it's a great effort well, and how a about great this play. Way? Where do you put the runners that's, if it's not a catch? That's right. Well, they have to check it. You know they're going to take a look at it because it's the possible double play to end the game. But you're right because, yeah, that's. So it's clearly not a catch. So we know that's going to change. But the Cunningham runner. Cunningham runner to second. Now, they do have a responsibility to. That's right. And he was rounding runners, second. But he was heading to yeah. third. Actually, it it was a daring play on Cunningham, but the fact that he had rounded second on his way to third, so you'd almost have to think they would allow him to go to third. Well, and and listen, if let's see, so he sees it, and, and it looked like it was headed for yeah. the gap. So right there, he's not quite well, sure. You know, maybe he wasn't going. Maybe he had gotten a second, so maybe they would only allow him second base. Well. And I and and a risky play by Smolinski. Yeah, very risky. Huge, very risky. And because he's diving for it, trying to make the play. And if it gets by him, he's, he has no body to block it. It's it, not good if he gets by. It, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's definitely not good. So I got to believe that listen that you could see the ball hit the ground but this discussion is well what do we do with the runners here. Yeah that, that's a good point. Now what I've been told is that there's supposedly a box behind home plate that saves the whole field yeah. and can see where the runners are. In the event a play like this occurs. And that is Jeff Dowson, the crew chief, on the left. And he's saying, okay, okay. So I agree with you. It's a matter of where the base runner is going. Yeah, we're going to find out. He's safe. safe. And now they're going to put the runners. And I think it's first and third. Yep, right? Is I that think where they're right. And that's exactly what Bob Melvin's going to double check on. And Bob Melvin wants a little explanation. And listen, it's a tough call. Yeah. I think if, if, the play is ruled no catch. Cunningham is going to probably be standing at third. If it's no catch, right. If he rules it a no catch, he's going to keep running out. And Bob Belvin, as he should, wants yeah. an explanation. Yes. A good look here. So let's say the ump waves it off and says no catch. Cunningham. Is probably going to go to third. He's going to he, he's going to be that close to second yeah. base, and he's going to go to third. You're right. So the game was over for a little bit, and now unfortunately yeah. it's first and third and one out. So Bob Melvin is going to visit with his pitcher, catcher, and infielders. You do not see. The replay have to put the runners where they think is the right spot. You do right. not see that very no, often. You're right. I mean, how many times have we seen that in the right. last couple years? Very seldom. But it is a decision that has to be made back in New York. Well, in the A's, Bob Melvin, a discussion with his infielders and pitcher and see if they play for two, which you think they're going to. Now, remember, Manson. In at a game against the Astros with the bases loaded and a double play ground ball to short hit by Gaddis. Now it's kind of a halfway because if the ball's not hit hard enough to turn a possible double play, you'd think they'd want to try to get Cunningham at the plate. Potential tying run. And here's Giovatella. Giovatella swinging a pitch way inside and rips it foul. Cutting him at third, Nava at first. That's right. It's uh, they have a pinch runner, Shane Robinson is oh, the Shane pinch Robinson, runner. Yeah, right. They just pinch ran for him while all the everything was going on. So he's pitch running. But it is first and third. So he had the speed in Givatella.
Runner goes and the ball's bounced foul down the third base line. So Robinson was on the move. He got a great, great job yes, too. Did. And you know, Mike Sosha has never been one to stand pat on anything. I mean, he's he's as much of a a manager who's going to put guys in motion, even when they're down. They're down now, and he was taking the chance to try to stay out of a double play. Gary DeSarcina has moved over from third base to first base coach. Robinson not running this time, and the ball is hit foul. Giovatella will battle you. He does not strike out a lot. C.J. Crone has come out into the on deck circle. That's Jet Bandy's spot. But Giovatella has struck out 25 times in 205 at bats. That's not a lot. But Madsen needs one here. No two pitch is hit in the air to right center. Plenty deep. Smolinski and Burns come together. Smolinski has it. And Cunningham's going to come in to score, and we're tied 2 2. I was glad that Robinson didn't tag up because I thought he should have. I agree. Fastball away, and all Giovatella is trying to do is that hit a ball in the air, keep it off the ground, and definitely deep enough. But he could have with Smolenski running in front of Burns catching the ball and then going back the warning now track. Batting, number 24, CJ Crone. So the Angels have tied it here in the ninth. Batting for Bandy. And here's Crone, the pinch hitter for Bandy. Fernando Salas, possible with a tie, Houston three for the lead. And that's a good thing to throw over because you'd have to figure Robinson's going to be on the move. He got a great jump when it was first and third. Crone takes the first pitch strike. Throwing 258, five home runs, 29 RBIs, get 10 doubles and a triple. Keep an eye on Robinson. He's got a big lead. There's a drive towards Smolinski, who's right there, reaches up, makes the catch, side retired. So the Angels tie We're going to the bottom of the ninth. It's a 2 2 game. The telecast is presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. So the Angels tied it in the top of the ninth, getting a single run. It's time for change. Six Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. So Fernando Salas comes in for his 31st appearance. 
He's three and two with a 3.82 ERA. And he'll face Lowry, Alonzo, and Simeon. Shane Robinson stays in the game in left field, and Carlos Perez is your new catcher. So those are the changes. First pitch to Lowry is a bit high. If the A's are going to win, it'll be a walk-off win. That one called the ball, 2-0. Oh. Somehow. John Axford starting to throw. Pitch is fouled left side. Lowry tonight has struck out. He has singled and he has grounded out. And they have a hitter at the plate now who's hit one home run. He tied the game in Houston. And the guy in the on deck circle, Alonzo, has hit one home run and he had a walk off against the Astros. So both have had big home runs for the A's this year. And right now, after a tie game in the top tonight, just trying to get something started in the bottom. Fouled again. Shoemaker, Alvarez, Morn, and Salas. Your four pitchers for the Angels tonight. Mike Morn, an inning in two thirds. Didn't seem like a big deal, but hey, kept the A's off the board. Yeah. Kept it a one run game, and the Angels were able to tie it. That one just <laughs> missed. I think Lowry thought it was going to be called a strike. I think you're exactly right. <laughs> Doesn't mean it was, but it was close. So a full count. Rounded toward first. Pujol stays with it. Flips to Salas. One away. So here's Yonder Alonzo. This is the walk-off. Matt Deshack. It was not a loss to Deshack, but he gave up the long one. And Yonder Alonzo very deep. And a three-run walk-off home run against the Astros. And he was happy. He was very happy to take the find the face. And then the better of Gatorade. And all good for him. My God. Good interview. <laughs> We'd love to have him on again. Yeah, right now. Right now. In like 30 seconds. <laughs> Had a good night. Had a sacrifice fly in the second. He singled and stole the base in the fourth. And had a number, another single in the seventh. Well, the one stands out right now, Cup. You're talking about an insurance run when the A's had a chance in the fourth inning after Chris Davis made it a two to one game with a home run. A's with the first and third, one out. That's right. And a big strikeout that Shoemaker got, which uh, he had the good split working tonight. Strikeout seven, majority of them with the good split finger fastball, and that was a big one in the fourth inning. And at this point, it turns out to be huge. And now two. And that would hit in the air toward left. Shane Robinson is right there, two away. And Salas will now face Marcus Simeon, who is 0 for 3. Simeon with a foul out to right field, a strikeout, and reached out a fielder's choice. Pitch to Marcus, slider away. 
Eight with the 13th here at the Coliseum. Fastball. Marcus Simeon with 12 home runs. And Marcus one of the 12 with that fastball that ran out on the inside part of the plate. Good swing there. Well, he's in that series. He hit three home runs. That's right. Two against Santiago. You're right. So one and one the count. Breaking ball just missed. The crowd tonight, 24,591. Nice crowd. Slider that Salas thought he had. Of course, he also thought he had a fastball strikeout to Ed Lowry, but it did not work. Tried the same pitch, misses again, and now it's three. See if Simeon gets something to hit on 3 1. Salas, you know, he got Alonzo 3 2, or make that louder, and he threw him a little something off yeah. speed, too. I think Marcus was looking for the off speed pitch, and understand it, but so. Salas knows he's not going to give up all month. And a pitch is a bit high, and the A's have a two out base runner here in the night. Well, take a page out of the Mike Sosha playbook, let him steal second, and drive him in with a base hit. Something. Yeah. Uh, Jake Smolenski, as he was aggressive in the first pitch, is only at bat tonight when he pitched it for Muncy. Maybe he could get in the fastball. Mike Trout is somewhere in center field. <laughs> He's sitting next to our camera operator out in center field. <laughs> he may be talking to them, but that is playing no doubles. I mean, he can, if he goes much farther, he's going to have dirt on his shoes from the warning track. That is steep, but that's, I mean, everybody. That's the deepest we've ever that seen. That is it. the deepest. He looks like the guy, the pitcher in batting practice who really doesn't want to shag a lot. He just wants to be left alone. Or actually Clay Wood who was out there shagging this afternoon for the extra He's hitters. Watching. Yeah, that. just, yeah. He said no range at all and I'm out here shagging. <laughs> See me digging in, not running. And missed again. 2-0 oh to Smolinski. Maybe we could ask our cameraman to talk to Tron and ask him what he's thinking. He's oh, that, that close. That would be a, a very easy conversation. <laughs> Look how that is close. Uh, Trout covers a lot of ground anyway, but that's the extreme. Calhoun, everybody's playing deep in the outfield. A lot of speed. Breaking ball on 2 and 0, oh, and it's a high strike call, 2 and 1. Hanging slider. Smolinski, though. Rightfully so, probably looking fastball. He geared for it, got the hanger, but could not pull the trigger. Maybe thought a little bit too high, thought he might hit under it. Carlos Perez dropping the signs down for Salas. That was a hook of horn throw to first. Yep. So we know what the index and little finger is. That's called a throw to first. Ball away. Right field. Good drop, and it will. Simeon goes to third, and now it's going to be up to Billy Burns to try to win it for the A's. And that's the danger of playing no doubles right there. That's an out, an easy out. Cloud almost got to it anyway. But inside out swing by Smolenski. And because he was playing so deep, now he's going to come in and just could not get to it. And he was hopeful and happy that the ball didn't spin backwards on him and miss it. So Marcus running all the way and running hard to 30 case watch for him to send him. And now the dilemma really for the, the Angels is the speed of Billy Burns. With his speed, with a ball hit on the ground, and of course important for Smolensky. 
I mean, the infield's going to play in like it's. Well, I mean, it's not surprising because of the speed of Billy Burns, but he hits a ball in between third and short. Smolensky's got to hustle to get to second. First pitch to Burns. Hit in the hole. Base hit left field. And thanks to Billy Burns, they're going to walk off at the Coliseum tonight. A's win it 3 to 2. Should have known it. He was not going to wait around, yeah. and he didn't. He goes after the first pitch, and you know, Ray, it's funny. Right before that first pitch, you talked about the infielders were cheated yeah. in a little bit, and you wonder if that may have hurt the Angels infielders yeah. right there. Well, the outfield is playing deep, and third baseman Escobar, even with the bag, Simmons couldn't get to it. And once it got to the outfield, the fact that Simeon could go to third on the base hit by Smolensky. And all this happening with a two out walk to Marcus Simeon. And Billy Burns with a base hit to left field. And as always, a game against the Angels is going to be interesting and exciting right down to the wire. Another one run game, this time the victory for the Athletics. Well, yes. Billy. Chase around. Let's go, Billy. Get the little guy. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so after a disappointing game yesterday where the A's were almost uh, no hit they come back yeah. and it was a good tight ball game good yeah. pitching by the A's you know Matson gave up a run in the ninth but Graben was terrific and uh, as it gets late in the game it's just you feel like you got a good pitching performance Absolutely. from the starter you Absolutely. really need to win the game yeah. and uh, the A's got a nice little two out rally there in the bottom. And it's too bad to Kendall Graben of course he finishes on a positive note which is very important even though his pitch count may have allowed him to go out for another inning but he finished great. 12 ground ball outs and a great performance by him and uh, Billy's waiting right now. All right, Billy Burns downstairs putting the headset on. He is the hero tonight with the walk off base hit. And Billy, after what happened yesterday, how important was it to, to just win a game tonight? You know, whether it's a, a blowout or whether it's a close game, but how important to win a game after almost being no hit yesterday? Uh, it was big for us, especially as a team. I mean, we talked about it before the game, just just getting a win and just playing for the team and just coming out here and competing against whoever we're facing. So it was huge for us. How important it was for you, and I know you're concentrating on hitting the ball on the ground or line drives. Look out. <laughs> so much for that interview. <laughs> That'll, that'll do it. <laughs> you know, I remember tomorrow's starting pitcher for the Angels named Tim Lincecum had a no hitter or something similar to happen. He just, see you later, I'm out of here. You know what? If you get the walk off hit, you can end the That's interview right. anytime That's you right. want. And he did. But yeah, you know what? He, get, he went after that first pitch against Fernando Salas. He's obviously in the dugout in the on deck circle watching what's going on. And uh, yeah, we should have known he was going to jump on the first one. And sometimes the first one. Is the best pitch to hit, and it looked like a fastball. And you know the one thing about him, and I was just asking the question, we did not get a response, obviously, but he has been working so hard with Darren Bush, hitting down on the ball, down to get ground balls, get line drives instead of the fly ball outs, because he knows he has the speed. And coincidentally, tonight he did not win the big head race, but Ricky Henderson was here talking to Billy Burns, and uh, I think Billy is at his best in front of the greatest all-time base hit. All right, so let's talk about Kendall Graveman briefly, because he was really good. Seven shutout innings. And again, pitching with more confidence tonight, and I think that's very important with him. And it, it looked like, at least to us, Ray, pounding the fastball, using the good sinker, and it seemed like he was using the sinker more tonight. You know, he could learn from what Kobe Lewis did yesterday and watching him. You could also learn tonight, keep the ball on the ground, 12 ground ball outs, and he finishes very, very strongly, and good sinker down and in to, to get the hitter there. Good sinker also down, but then he starts to get the ground ball outs. He had the breaking ball working. He gets the fly ball outs, but the bottom line, when you get 12 ground ball outs and you're a sinker ball pitcher, that's what you want. 91 pitches. Yes, he could have gone out, but I think the important thing that Kurt Young and Bob Mellon thinking, let's finish him on a positive note, turn it over to the well-rested bullpen, and the A's end up getting a win. All right, indeed, and it was a walk-off win for the A's as they uh, beat the Angels for the first time this year.
with a final score of three to two. So it'll be day baseball tomorrow. We'll look forward to that. Two hours and 51 minutes. That was time of game. Crowd was 24,591, and they enjoyed it. They got a walk-off win thanks to Billy Burns. Final score tonight, the Athletics three and the Angels two. You've been watching Oakland A's baseball on CSN California. It's part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's post-game live with Brody and shooting starts right now.